Hi, welcome to SFG Cards and Craft. Today I'd like to show you how I did this little card using Waffle Flowers uh, Rock My World die set. Um, when I was actually using this die set as it was intended to make rocks, I looked at the first few rocks that I did and I thought, gee, I could make potatoes out of this. And because potatoes are all sorts of odd shapes anyway and sizes, so this is what I'm, I'm doing here today. Uh, you'll notice that I'm actually at the moment just cutting the first one, but I do cut six of these, um, mainly because I'm making more than one card off screen. I'm making a second and a third card. Um, but I actually double up because the paper I'm using is only 185 grams and because I'm putting it up on uh, dimensional tape like just little squares I wanted to make it a little bit thicker, a little bit stiffer so I'm actually doubling up on the actual uh, thickness of the paper so I'm doubling by gluing two pieces together um, so this is why I've cut six This waffle flower set is actually only very new for me. I only, only got it a few days ago. Uh, now, the inks that I'm going to be using to colour the potato is Antique Linen First, Rusty Hinge, Brushed Corduroy, and a little bit of Gathered Twig. And then I go in later on, once they're glued together, and put the Gathered Twig around the edge. Now, I found it would be better, or well, not that I've actually tried it without doing, but I think it would be better to do this, uh, to colour the potato, uh, at least doing this blending part before you actually glue the two parts together because it's thinner and is easier to do the blending on it I would expect. I haven't tried it the other way but I'm assuming that that would be easier this way. So I'm actually working on the three potatoes but I actually made the one card on screen here. Uh, now with the, the antique linen you'll notice that I've actually put that over the whole of the potato. I'm calling it a potato now because that's what I'm intending it to be. Um, the rusty hinge I'm putting next, I'm putting that sort of halfway in, so it's sort of still a little bit of the antique linen sort of as the lightest colour inside. And then when I come in with the brushed corduroy, I don't quite put it in as far. So it's basically sort of to 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 get the depth, to the roundness of the potato, that, that's what I'm hoping will actually appear anyway. So this is what I'm actually working on. So less and less on each layer that you that you put on so you put less of the next colour on and that was the rusty hinge coming in now with the brushed corduroy the first time I actually did this potato I actually used uh, the espresso one on it and I thought that came out a little bit too dark so that's why I ended up using the gathered twig because it wasn't quite as dark so and this potato has actually got a lot of dirt on it, it wouldn't be uh, as dark as what the uh, ground espresso would be. And this third color, fourth color, sorry, is the gathered twig just on the edges there, on, on the very sort of outside and then as I said after I've glued them together and the glue's dry I come back in and I just do the uh, the cut edge of them so as you can see it's sort of getting less and less on each layer of um, color that's going on so that you still got in the middle you still got well the lightest color which is the antique linen so it's sort of indicating the highlight Okay, they're even looking more and more like potatoes now, even without the eyes in. And oh yes, um, that was uh, for the eyes on the potato. I'm using rusty hinge, which is the first colour that goes down, and then just a tiniest little dot of ground espresso, which is uh, the way the eyes on the potatoes appear to me. Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you, you might like to put a lighter colour than the rusty hinge on but I, I think anything lighter wouldn't show in the darker areas and then of course the very very fine dot of um, which is I don't water that down really I just put it on I think on a pretty dry brush um, of the ground espresso just a tiny dot into the middle oh no I have got my wet, uh, wet brush sorry but I, I didn't actually uh, spread it around any so uh, it's just a tiny little dot in there as you can see, you don't want any too, too much because otherwise it would just look too much and wouldn't look realisticish. Okay, this is gluing them together. I've just refilled my bottle and the glue's just coming out really quickly at the moment. I just squeezed it a little bit and it just came out really quickly. So uh, that's using the multimedia matte 
or multi matte medium. I always get that back to front. Sorry about that. That's the Ranger one. I find that this is this is now the only wet glue that I actually use is the Ranger matte medium glue. So there's a close up of what the potato looks like. I think it looks fairly realistic. Um, just coming in to do the grass, and as I said, I'm actually doing two of these, so uh, I don't know if I show both grasses being done or not. Um, using mowed lawn on as the bulk of it, and then I just come in with a bit of the um, where's the grass, a crushed olive. I'm sorry, I'm reading this off my notes here. Uh, so the cr that's that's the mowed lawn now, and then the crushed olive. I do the blades of grass with the crushed olive, and then blend it back a little bit. With the grass, you don't want it to look too smooth, I don't think, because it doesn't have the depth if you make it too smooth. That's why I'm not making it smooth. I could blend it out better than that, but I don't think it's necessary. Not if you want it to look a bit like it's got depth in it. And it's the crushed olive going on. <coughs> Okay, I think I'm doing the yes, I'm doing this the um, sentiment now. This is using Lawn Fawns Harold's ABC. Uh, that's the only alphabet die set that I've actually got that's small like this. I, I would like to get a smaller one if it's at all possible, but so far I'm sort of haven't found one. Um, maybe I should actually get some sentiments of my own made up. I, I'm as proper stamps. But anyway, that's this one I said, I only have eyes for you. I thought it was appropriate <laughs> because it's a potato and potato have eyes anyway. That's what the little dots are that I've got on there. I'm, I'm not sure. Well, that's what we call them here in, in Australia and, and in New Zealand are called that. I, I don't know what the rest of the world calls those spots on a potato, but that's what we call them as eyes. If anyone can let me know if there's any other name for them, that would be nice. Uh, now, this is the Technics Tuesday uh, this is also another new one for me. I haven't, other than the dragonfly, at this point I hadn't actually used uh, any of the other stamps. I've, I've got this, this stamp, the Technics Tuesday Hyacinth stamp, at the same time as these potato, sorry, <laughs> the rock dies. I'm calling them potato dies because that's what I'm making, but um, same day. Now, the clouds that I'm used on there, that's the Avery L Pierced Clouds set. And this is the first time that I've ever actually used that little cloud that just pierces dots. I've never actually used it before. This is the very first time. I think it looks quite good actually. I, I'll have to use it again. It looks really good. And just doing the background, um, just the sky I'm just doing with Salty Ocean on this card. I thought I'd, the Broken China I thought might have been a little bit pale. Um, so I'm just using the Salty Ocean. I don't need to go all the way down because the grass will cover the bottom there. And I'm sort of not blending that out too well either. I'm trying to make it sort of look like there's clouds in the distance as well like so that's where the white sky sort of in behind comes from and I also I just wiping the um, worker table there off this this what I'm actually using here that I do all my blending on is actually just a piece of paper that I've laminated into a laminating pouch just cut it down a little bit so that it fits nicely and just laminate it in there and I this is all I use also for my um, palette on the side there is just the same thing just a smaller one uh, and okay now what I'm doing here is because the clouds I've got them covered with the blue I decided to go in with just the water brush and take away the ink from the cloud so it becomes more white it's not perfectly white you look at it up close and you can still see a bit of the blue color in there uh, but it's a lot whiter than what the background around it is so it appears to be white and then after this is done I actually put some spectrum noir clear sparkle into it it is a cloud after all. Now the little dragonfly, oh, sorry I didn't show putting the spectrum wire but the clouds have got that on. Uh, the little dragonfly, I'm doing the body of that in rusty hinge just mainly because I think I had rusty hinge out on the palette there. I probably should have done it something with a little bit darker body because I know dragonflies usually are a bit darker than that, almost black but their, their bodies are also iridescent uh, like their wings but I didn't show the iridescence on the body here, just on the wings. So you'll see me do that shortly. And I think I got a little bit of spillover and smudged it a bit more than what I needed to there. 
sorry about that the little dragonfly this this one actually has an error with it like the stamp itself it uh, has like a tear on the wing part the wings are very fine and it's got like a tear in it on both wings in the same place like up the front and, and near the ends um, so I've just drawn that in with the um, Copic multi-liner brush just a fine one I, I suppose if I actually uh, sent the stamp set back as a faulty stamp set it would just get another one the same back anyway so I'm not going to worry okay now iridescent paint I'm using the Joe Sonia turquoise iridescent paint I only need a tiny tiny little bit so I've got the smallest drop out that I could possibly get out and just on a dry brush just putting it on there this is actually a true paint it's a uh, an acrylic paint not a water based paint uh, sorry it's water based but not a water paint so you've got to wash your brushes out if it dries on your brush your brushes brush is ruined so once once you've uh, brushed it on you've got to clean it out probably not like watercolor paint you can come back days later and wash it out and it'll be fine but with the acrylic paints if it dries in there you've ruined your brush forever so I'm just brushing that onto the wings just to get a bit, a bit of gleam on it it's an iridescent paint I've actually got the full set of six colors of the iridescent paints I've got uh, in that set there's uh, this is the turquoise there's also a, a blue um, a yellow which is sort of I think called gold uh, there's a pink and a purple and the green the green is very pretty well they're all very pretty actually if you see them right you put them on a dark background and they look quite pretty very beautiful okay just sort of smoothing it out a little bit because it is paint it does tend to sort of go on a little bit thick um, now just using a black glaze pen to do the eye just adopt the eyes in a little bit just to make them sort of stand out because the, the eyes actually didn't stamp as black spots they just had a, like a, the shape of the head there without the, the eyes being stamped in there so I thought I'll just put black eyes on it that was just the black glaze pen um, I know putting a second coat of the um, Spectrum Noir I like to have it really glittery this these these pens they are very glittery but uh, I just like to have a second coat put on there I think it looks much nicer with a second coat because you get extra glitter I actually have the um, the other glitter ones the um, can't remember what they're called now uh, but I prefer this one okay using the uh, Ranger multi matte medium again just to glue the grass down I'm just putting a line of glue along there and then just with my finger I just sort of spread it across the blades of the grass unfortunately it's off screen at the moment but you can sort of tell what I'm doing there just sort of spreading it across so that the blades of grass will all get stuck down as well because if you don't put that on there that can be lifted up quite easily and then just a, a little bit just to spread along I probably could have used my tape runner for the bottom half of this as well but I didn't worry about that since I had the glue there you don't need very much glue and I've made a lot of cards and I've only just gone through one bottle of that and it's a very small bottle I just refilled it as I said earlier okay now what am I doing here oh yes the edge of the potatoes this is where I said earlier I was using the edge of the potatoes I'm using the gathered twig just to block it just to get rid of that white uh, like on, on the piece underneath the uh, white edge If I actually had some uh, Copic markers, I'd probably use a brown Copic marker just to go around, but I don't have any Copics other than the multi liners. So, um, yeah, anyway. Um, now, I think the grass is probably dry enough to actually stick the potato down. With the potato, I found uh, the ver very first one that I did, I actually stuck the eyes on and, silly me, turned it straight over to put the 3D tape on. And by the time I turned it back again, the eyes had all moved and sort of shoved themselves right up to the top. And it uh, left the the glue smear along it but because it's matte glue it didn't really matter much anyway so I decided this time I'll stick it down with the dimensional tape before I put the eyes on so this is what I'm doing here it, I could have let it with the eyes put on first and then let it dry but I didn't I decided to do it like this all in one because that would means I'd have to stop the filming and then come back again later on so I didn't do that so and then push it down with the eyes also you can't really push it down tightly with, with the uh, foam is sitting near under the eyes 
and I'm having a bit of trouble getting these off. This, this is actually a new packet of these uh, foam squares for me, and for some reason they're quite difficult to get off. That's why I cut it out of the video there, because it did take a few minutes. And there's the little potato sitting there. Um, now this this card here, I, I, I've made it into a Valentine's card. I know it's a bit late for Valentine's for this year, but really, I mean, you could probably say, rather than be my Valentine inside, you could probably say something like, marry me. Uh, so, because it's the same sort of thing, I guess, but, uh, or let's get married or whatever else inside. But uh, as I said, I've just put be my Valentine inside, but you could put anything like that. And just coming in again, I'm just using the multi matte medium again and my pick up, quick pick up tool. The first one that I did of these, I actually used oval eyes on it, but I thought they looked better with the round eyes on this potato. And um, I've got ideas of uh, more different cards using these same little rock cutouts as potatoes. So uh, expect a few more of these, or at least another one or two from me anyway, of these in the near future, hopefully, because I have some ideas at the moment. but. Uh, I'm just trying to work out a way of actually doing what I'm wanting to do. So uh, at the moment I haven't actually worked that out fully, but uh, that's just one of those things. Uh, and I'm putting eyebrows on because he's asking a very big question, I guess, to be Valentine or to marry you or whatever. He's got worried eyebrows. So uh, I've put the eyebrows on as well. And because he's a little bit worried and whatever I'm going to put flush cheeks on him as well so he's, he's getting a little bit of worn lipstick for um, blushing cheeks I guess you could call them yeah the, the one that I've just done there looks all right but this one I realized I'd put it a little bit too far closer to the under the eye and so it didn't look quite so good but you get the general idea I mean this is just really the the first one of these I've actually done so that's the card panel and I've just stuck it down onto a blue card base. Now I'm just doing the inside and says be my valentine. Uh, this be my valentine comes out of a uh, another different stamp set. I don't think I actually show it here. I will put that in the description. It's one with little frogs on it but I didn't actually show it there. Sorry about that. And I can't remember just at the offhand what it is. I haven't got it written down. And just going around with the salty ocean just on the inside. This is not watercolour paper, this one. It's just a um, Xyron, sorry, Xyrox, Xerox. Uh, it's a cheap cardstock, uh, 280 grams. So it's good thick cardstock, but it's, it's certainly not watercolour paper. So you can't really do much in the way of anything on it like that. But I find just blending the edge of it like that is fine. And there's the full card. I only have eyes for you. Be my valentine. As I said, you could put marry me or something to that effect inside as well. Okay, well, if you like the card, uh, if you can please subscribe and uh, click the liked box. And uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.